Hey! So in the previous video I shared you the problems we currently have in precious plastic and it doesn't look good so it's either gonna make it or not and it's gonna be the end of it. it sounds dramatic but what it is. Uh, so first off thank you all for the wonderful reactions and replies on that. It's good to have a supporting community behind this project and we took these months to figure out what do we want to do, what is the role of this project uh, did we achieve our mission and we should just stop? Is there still a lot more to do? Is there a problem to work on? So we figured let's go to the roots and see why this project started in the first place. Which was because there was a lot of plastic waste laying around polluting the environment. Like it's, it's everywhere. And then I heard that less than 10% of all our plastic actually gets recycled. Which isn't a lot, I mean we produce a lot of plastic. Yeah, that was me 10 years ago talking about this topic when still less than 10% of all our plastic got recycled. And because of that we developed open source machines, molds, products and built an entire global community of plastic recyclers over 50 countries around the world. Altogether recycling million kilograms of plastic. Great, lots of work done. So let's check it out. 10 years later how much got recycled now? What percentage of plastic got recycled globally in 2024? Keep it short, please. Hmm. So still less than 10%. It's a bit painful. Seems like no progress at all. Well, sort of. Let me explain with this graph. It shows all the plastic we produced worldwide. From 1950 to when the project started and now. And as you can see, the line is always going up. And both times we recycled less than 10% of plastic. But the amount of recycled plastic did actually increase quite a few million tons. Because this is more than that. Because we produce more plastic. So technically we recycle more, but we also produce more and waste more. And on top of that, it's estimated that this line will continue to go up for the coming decades. Yeah, that doesn't seem to go in the right direction at all. In the Netherlands we call this mopping with the tap open. So it's currently 2025 and at Precious Plastic we see three main issues. So let me go a bit more in depth of each. First off, plastic recycling is a tough job also to financially sustain. But we need to make sure this work continues because all the plastic that doesn't get recycled ends up in the landfill, ocean or it gets burnt, which isn't great. So we need to keep on recycling, but the current recycling network cannot sustain itself. More about that in our previous video where we talk about the problems. Second, we don't recycle enough. Currently the big plastic industry is focused on two main types, PET and HDPE, because you can find them in large volume and mostly a bit more clean. But there are many different plastic types out there, literally hundreds, and they don't have a proper recycling infrastructure. Like foils, plexiglass, 3D printer waste. If we want to increase our recycling rates, they need to be integrated. And third, this seems like an obvious one, but why not just stop producing plastic? Realistically, we do need some plastic to power up our current world, like car parts, electronics, water tube, electric cables. But there are also many other products where plastic is used for that could potentially be another material. That said, it's still not very easy because plastic has a few unique properties, like it's waterproof, lightweight, flexible, durable. So we need to find alternative materials that can replace those properties which is going to take a while and requires a big material research to figure out how to replace this. So yeah, still quite some really big, large, complex problems in the world of plastic waste. So going back to the original question, I don't think it's time for precious plastic to die. In fact, the opposite. I think there's much more work to do for precious plastic. So we sat down, talked with community members and we made a plan. Version 5. Are you ready for it? It's actually based on the three key problems I just mentioned and we'll try to tackle them one by one. And together this is version 5. So let me show you what we want to do for each phase. So first up, phase 1, with the goal to sustain the recycling network. And with network we mean precious plastic itself and all the recycling workspaces around the world. We want to make sure this can continue to operate and bring more income to the recyclers in it. So let me take this moment to thank all the plastic recyclers out there. I know it's a tough job but great that you're doing it. And we actually see it as our role to help you out to make sure you can continue recycling. So this is what we have in mind to do that. First we want to bring more resources from large companies to small scale recyclers by selling the impact data we generate from our global network. A bit similar to how you have carbon credits, you can also have plastic credits. This means we need to do stuff like verify the data, make it presentable and establish these partnerships with these larger organizations. But the main goal here would be to make sure there's more income for plastic recyclers. 
Next up is our global marketplace or bazaar. This is actually already up and running. It's a place where you can buy your recycling equipment, but also buy and sell shredded plastic. It's very useful. Already quite some transactions happen here, but the user experience is pretty bad. The platform is outdated and it's got a bit messy throughout the years because there are many different machines and variations. So it's hard to find exactly the machine you're looking for with the right quality. So the goal is to do a big upgrade and make sure this is the main place if you want to buy or sell plastic recycling equipment or material. Next up, products. By now there are quite some really cool products made within precious plastic. Uh, but for workspaces it's actually quite hard to sell them because they spend most of their time collecting, shredding, melting the plastic. And the selling part is quite complex for them. And also because they're often competing with these really large organizations that have a big marketing budget and they often make things from new plastic so they can make it much cheaper. So we're gonna step in by setting up a dedicated web shop where they can sell them. So we'll do a careful selection of finding the best products out there, taking care of logistics, shipping, making sure the branding is in place with good visuals. So the workspaces don't have to think about that. And the goal is to be the main place that if you wanna buy a recycled plastic product, that's where you find it. And in the end, every product sold from recycled plastic is a win, especially if it can replace a virgin plastic product. And finally, we wanna make the community itself more resilient. Because if all the things we just mentioned will be developed, more income would flow to the plastic recyclers. So we will integrate a membership model where they can pay something back to the organization so that one can also sustain itself. And this actually also creates a good incentive for Precious Plastic because it wants to continue to support all these workspaces and keeping them happy members. And the goal here really is to build a healthy mechanism that can sustain a big global community long term. Actually, just for this occasion, we started to roll out the membership program. You can sign up with your workspace and be one of the first supporters. You get some perks, but it's really just the beginning as we continue to improve it and add more rewards over time. But you can join now and help us actually shape this program. So as you can see, this phase had quite a few different projects and you can actually help out to develop them as well. Go to the website, sign up from video making to business developers to graphic design, a bunch of applications are there. So to wrap up phase one, the goal here is really to make sure more income flows to all the workspaces and precious plastic itself to make sure the whole thing can sustain itself long term and it can keep on recycling plastic. So once this is done, we can move to the next phase where things get more exciting and our impact grows because we want to increase the amount of plastic recycled. First thing I want to focus on, YouTube. We actually used to do this quite a lot and it was a great tool because we could share knowledge, have people involved in the development process and also just really build a community around the project. But a few years ago we got kicked out of our workspace so we couldn't do this anymore and we stopped. So one of the first things we want to do is to get a workspace, get a bunch of machines, equipment and start making videos again. From reviewing machines to testing new molds and developing new processes on how to recycle plastic. Which brings me to the next big thing we want to develop be able to recycle more types of plastic. As I mentioned before, you have all these different types of plastic like foils, plexiglass, crisp bags, laminated plastic, 3D printer waste and many more. Technically many of them can be recycled, but it doesn't happen on industrial scale, so most of them get landfilled or burned. We will continue to develop machines and techniques that allow people to turn this plastic waste into something new, tackling them one by one. And as always, shared open source so people around the world can replicate the processes. And this is actually quite a good complementary to the plastic industry because they are focused on a few plastic types that are really big but all the smaller waste streams are just left hanging. But Fresh Plastic is a decentralized local network so it can really pick up all those more niche waste streams. But yeah, the tools and techniques for this still need to be developed. And after all these new developments we will do a big update to the academy which is really the core of Precious Plastic. It's the place where we educate people on how to become a plastic recycler by having all these instruction videos and step-by-step -step guides and processes. Everyone in the Precious Plastic network went through this. But lots of information is outdated from 2016 and we learned a lot more about safety, certification and scaling up a recycling workspace. Plus we will integrate the community knowledge from all the workspaces around the world which means over 40 in-depth educational videos and lots of documentation. So this update should make it easier to start recycling plastic, but also make all the existing workspaces more efficient and more professional. And finally, we need to make a whole bunch of updates to our website to integrate all these changes we just mentioned, but also reposition fresh plastic for the coming years to come. 
But one noteworthy thing we want to add here is um, we will integrate a better way for an average citizen around the world to find out where they can drop off their plastic that they collected. So really making it easier to go to a map and see where can I leave the plastic that I recycled so it actually gets integrated into the recycling system. So just to summarize phase two, you can really see this as a big upgrade to the entire network. By sharing new tools and information, everyone gets better. And this is actually quite unique about Precious Plastic, that we have this big decentralized community around the world, but very well connected, so the information can really flow quickly into each corner. Anyway, goal of phase two is to increase the amount of plastic recycled. Phase three. Now this might sound very logical, but it's actually quite a difficult step to take. Let me show you. As I mentioned before, plastic has many unique properties, and we managed to make that plastic from raw oil with lots of processing in between. So much that the once natural oil doesn't dissolve anymore in nature. So just replacing the input with another natural material doesn't really solve the problem. We also need to think about the afterlife of the product, making sure it can actually go back in nature. Now this is almost a bit overwhelming to do because there are so many different types of plastic in the world and different use cases. And it's gonna take many years to replace them all and have many people involved. But we see a way how to get this started. First step is by creating a big material research. We actually already started this research in version 4 as a little side project called Beyond Plastic. We will continue the research work and go much more in depth. Design example products and develop the tools and molds needed for these processes. Funny fact, many of these processes are actually very similar to precious plastic because you need heat and pressure to mold it into something new. Once we have a few of these processes figured out, we will do documentation. From videos to blueprints and 3D models. Our goal is to provide basic knowledge to get people started and continue to build upon. And finally, a global community. Because we believe with such a big complex topic, you need many people involved all around the world. And we know a bit how this works by now. So it's gonna be just like precious plastic, but then for plastic alternatives. It will be set up so all the basics are in place to grow a big healthy community so people can continue to research and develop and grow a network all around the world of people having more plastic alternative solutions. And that's the big multi-year plan for what Precious Plastic wants to do next. Make sure we continue the current recycling network, release new tools to increase the amount of plastic recycled and do research and development on plastic alternatives to avoid future waste. It's a big thing, but it can be developed phase by phase, and each has its own cost. And altogether, for everything, we need 2 million. Now, this version 5 will be the biggest version we developed so far. And as always, shared open source online for free. So it would benefit thousands of people and reduce plastic waste all around the world. And we would actually love to build and release this and have a whole plan on how to get there. But there's one big challenge right in front of us. See, 2 million euro is a lot, especially for a non-profit community of plastic recyclers. I mean, they're all very dedicated and passionate, but they're not necessarily very wealthy. In the end, it's just a large amount to fund by individuals. There are also institutions, organizations and governments even benefiting from the documentation we release. So in a way, they should also help out. But the hard part is that plastic waste isn't really a hot topic anymore. A few years ago, everyone was talking about... Plastic. 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 But for some reason now we talk about other things, even though the problem is still very much there. Which makes it harder to find these funds. So here's the plan on how we want to take on this next big version. So first off, version 5 is massive. That's why we set it up in phases. Gradually increasing, so we can start small. And this is the important part where we need your help to kickstart it. Once you get it going, it will open up new opportunities, like attracting larger funding from institutions and organizations. So your financial support right here, right now, is very important to get phase one of version five started. Even if it's just a small amount, the more people supporting, the better the kickstart. You can go to preciousplastic.com, I'll put the link in the description below. And on the right side, you can see a big button that you can click to support. And on the bottom of that you can see uh, the top supporters and workspaces that help out and much more information about the whole plan. And also sharing this campaign around with your friends and family helps a lot to kickstart it. It's time to talk about plastic waste again. 